He works on the drive to restart play and he draws the foul on Mulcahy. Excellent possession there again. Spread, spread out Oresco. Had a little pick and roll situation. Created Darius a little lane to attack the basket and gets to the line for two. Only Mulcahy's second, so not really a danger zone because he expects the free throw. I say this kid is really showing me a lot because he's shown a lot of mental and physical toughness. He's maybe the smallest guy on the court and he's going into the teeth of the defense on a regular basis. That's should be an intentional foul. I was waiting for the arms to go up for intentional because that absolutely looked to me like it could have been called that way. And now frustration's clearly settling in now for Midtown. What you really don't want to have now is any embarrassing situations or any poor sportsmanship situations occur. Obviously, that's not how Coach Jim Mayo coaches or Frank Iosa, but these players are frustrated, and it's a very difficult time for them right now. Also, Jack Tobar, who committed the foul, I believe just checked in, so kind of just in the game, not really into the flow of the game. He just reaches out there, doesn't get to play in the ball, but did not get a wet, did not get called for what looked like an intentional foul. Murphy, open man, weak sides for Rodriguez. Nice pass. And the front line of Chris Cote doing the job once again. Now, if your coach is asking, you just want to kind of keep the ball out, kill some clock, get some easy looks. Nice, a great pass. Oh, wow, what a great pass. Uh, play lead to Diaz, and Diaz with eight off the bench. And I think the thing that sets Spokane apart from a lot of good players at this age, I believe we touched on earlier, is his ability to make those around him better distribute great for his teammates. He's not somebody who has to look for or choose to look for his own shot. Well, that, that's what I said earlier. It's not It's not a one-man gang here. Obviously, he's the best player on the floor on both with both teams. But he incorporates his, 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 his teammates. He has confidence in them. It's not like he's taking all these crazy shots. He's doing a great job of, of getting everybody involved. Good free from Pellicks to Murphy, and the basket's good. 33 to 10 now. As Midtown cracks double figures. But Harris picks up the foul in the backcourt. Checking in now for Oresco in on that last possession, number 21, Devin Barrett. One of the aforementioned young guys on this Oresco team who are going to be looked to kind of carry the torch going forward starting with next season. Barrett's father, Tico Barrett, assistant football coach at the on the mic today for a public address. Good look there by Armstrong just in the fall. It's a nice fake by Hicks. He's been going up straight, trying to attack all night, but he was able to kind of use some dial there and throw the defense. And Midtown trying to get a little bit of momentum here with just over a minute remaining. But Barry with a nice steal on That's a great job by Barry. Barry. Yeah. I, give, I give Devin Barrett a lot of credit. Took a tough shot in the right corner, but that didn't hamper his defensive prowess on the other side of the floor. He kept playing, came with a huge steal and a, and a great look ahead from OK layup. Shot no good over the back foul called on Cartel Brazil. Paradise and Roberts return. Both players did an excellent job on the defensive end earlier in this game, as we'll see almost whole set changes for the Bears. Only Hennix remaining on the court.
you probably have the opportunity if you're a Resco school to pull the ball out and play for the final shot of the third quarter if you choose to. Once you break this press, you could then basically maneuver around their defense and get the last shot of the third quarter. And it was wide open middle of the floor, power on alertly flashing. And that's exactly what looks like Coach Zassi is going to do. They're holding out for the last shot. Nice job there by Paradigm. Good defensive play by Midtown. Mark Eddie finishes. It's the second consecutive offensive possession where a shot didn't fall for Oresco, but you got to give credit to those two individual players. First it was Devin Barrett, and this time it's now Shane Paradine, not giving up on the play. Realizing they're, 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 they're going to go in for them on the offensive end, Hustle back, make a play on defense, get the ball out to Mulcahy, which he does what he does best, and that's finish in transition. 25-point lead now for Resco to start the fourth. Edmund Broderick's checked in the game for the Jaguars. Sixth grader, seeing his first action. Also for the Jaguars, number 25, Kevin Barnett. Whose brothers were on last season's championship team for Oresco. Go so we're seeing Coach Zowski get some of his younger guys, some of his bench involved as the fourth quarter begins. That's why Jared Diaz's play today has been so valuable for the Jaguars because last year they had the Bartnett twins who controlled the defensive glass very good defensively and they were lacking that during the year but this Jared Diaz has really stepped up and improved the whole way through and really showing the last two games. Wilson, Murphy, and both Rodriguez is in to start this fourth quarter for Midtown. And I'll tell you what, PS14 has three substitutes on the floor right now and two starters, and they never stop applying pressure on and off the ball on defense in the half court. They just don't, no matter who's in the game. And that's a tribute to the coaching. Coach Zaski has created that depth all season long, and it's coming to fruition today. As Edmund Broderick with the steal on the backcourt. He's got a nice future for the team score only the fifth goal, as you mentioned. Oh, Oresco, 39 to 12, as we come up on just over five minutes left in the third quarter. Obviously, everyone here tonight pulling for a competitive game, and with 5:04 to play, looks like we're not going to get the competitive game we thought we were going to get today. But a lot goes into it. A lot goes into this type of game, with the magnitude of it, the pressure, the attention, the crowd. It's so difficult to coach and play in this game because you just don't know what team is going to show up for you. Midtown is not 28 points worse than Oresco, or Oresco's not 28 points better than Midtown. But tonight, they were. And the big court also has to play a role. You think, you know, guys getting adjusted. I mean, they've played on this court of players before, but you're still getting adjusted to this. And the 
you know, like trapped, you're getting pressed all over, you get tired faster, you fatigue. Absolutely correct. And I, I tell you another thing, Matt. I, I, I can only speak of experience in coaching in this game a few different times. You cannot hear yourself think. That's how loud the crowd is. It's very difficult to communicate with your team. So the, the Midtown coaching staff could be saying all the right things, but it's difficult for their team to hear it in this environment. Fantastic baseline drive by Paradigm and the dish to Barnett for a deuce. The lead now 30 as Paul Mulcahy exits. He exited for Paradigm. I'll probably be the last we see of him. Right makes it 42 to 14. Draws the foul. Helix is a kid who, going into high school next year, is, he's got to grow a little bit, not very big, but very strong with the ball, fearless. Has about a string almost, really can pound it. I'm, I'm very it. impressed with him. I, I, think, I think the sky's limit for him. I think there's no question he can play at the next level, and I think he's going to be a terrific player. He's shown me a lot tonight. He's got a nice little step, too good for him, pretty good rotation. Just got to get a little bit stronger. And you can see that this moment, as overwhelming as it is for some players and some people, it's not big for him. He came out and played very hard tonight. A couple shots in the fall, but he continued to play on both ends of the floor. Very impressed with this young man. And he gets both free throws to go. And Midtown, a little confused. It's not make it take it. They have to give, give the ball up. And Josh Roberts who did a really nice job on both ends. Dino Lauer into the game. Dino, another fifth grade, excellent, not fifth grade, excellent all around athlete. Comes from a great family. Barnett no good, rebound corralled by Tobar. Hillix, no good. Russo, reverse, no good. And Paradigm making the push. Probably could have been a foul there, but let that one go. They let a lot of things go these last 345, I can tell you that. This is a lineup I think you'll see a lot of next year for Oresco. These kids are going to be relied on to be the main main players. I tell you, they have a lot of talent. They're very athletic, and they're they're headsy. They know how to play. Tough bunch of kids. Very unselfish too. You see everybody coming into the game, looking up for each other as just on cue. Three fouls for the foul judges. It's got to make Tico feel proud right there, I can tell you that. Very happy for him when that basket went down. That's a fun thing to do. I've announced a few of my dad's games, uh, coaching a few of my brother's games playing, and it's always a, a fun thing. It's a family affair right now. I tell you what, a nice, nice uh, deal of sportsmanship by Coach Zaski too. Getting these young kids in the game, put a lot of time up in the fourth quarter, get them a chance to play in an environment that they may never play in ever again. And it is always fun. Uh, I'll be honest with you. You know from coaching in the game and coaching several different schools in the game, and I know from being a part of the game as an eighth grader, it's something you do remember. And you still. If, I still keep in touch. I'm great friends with a lot of my teammates from that year. We still kind of talk about from time to time that game. And even though we lost, how much fun it was and how great of an experience it was to be involved in this type of environment. Oh, no question. I, I see a lot of my former players when I was at Midtown here tonight supporting, uh, you know, their, their former school, which I think is great. It's great. It's it's it's, it's great pride. It's it's great, you know, uh, where where you can look back to where you went to school. To come and support him, I think it's a great job. James Ash right in the game and rims out on the jump shot. And there again, another very good athlete. Hockey player, baseball player, great family. Oresco School is loaded with 
with these examples. Very impressed with this team. Kellis in turn, the very end. As you see, and we mentioned that pressure defense, Laura and Brown are putting some pressure on him. Now he's a little older, he's strong, he's able to land it, but it doesn't matter who's in the game for, for Oresco. They're gonna play hard, they're gonna put in your face defense on the line every possession. I made this comment the other day when I watched uh, the semifinal game. I haven't seen a young man improve more in a long, long time in the game of basketball than Anthony Flynn. I watched him last year as a, as a sixth grader. He was out there running. He always hustled. He always gave everything he had. But his skill level has improved immensely where he has the confidence now to take three-point shots. He's now being, he's running the point guard position now for Oresco School. He's dribbling the ball with both hands. He knows the game. Again, another great family in the Flynn's. As you said before, Dr. Pearson's nephew. They've been involved in athletics their whole lives. And it's really happy. It's, it, it makes you feel good when you see a kid like this who works hard. And really now, it's, it's, it's now coming through. And we're here up, we're at Lincoln School. On Mondays, we work out with the kids, you know, with the clinics, and Anthony's there on a weekly basis. He works hard, and I know it's Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and, 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 and I night. told him that too when I saw him there. I said, it's great to see kids putting the time in, and now you see it. Like I said before, come to fruition in, the, in, in a championship game, it's, it's an awesome example. Every kid should take a page out of Anthony Flynn's book. Brandon Russo, no good. Kicked out, Hillocks will look to drive and he will miss it. Barrett again, good passing as We've seen from some of these young guys. Very unselfish there by Flynn, too. Nice job getting the pass out in front in transition. See Coach Zazowski signal he wants a timeout as soon as his team gets possession. And he'll call right now just to get the last two subs in. And there's our number four, Timothy Jimenez. And number 20, Anish Chalubi. Timothy's another youngster who's been at Lincoln School a few weeks. He's got a nice skill set. <laughs> he does. I was watching that at, at your dad's clinic as well. He's, he's, got, he's got some uh, some talent as well. This Oresco team is loaded from top to bottom. But it all starts with the top, and that's Paul Mulcahy. He, he took over this game at the opening tap, never let go. And for the second consecutive year, it looks like he's going to lead his team to a city championship. Couldn't be happier for him and his family. Rodriguez with a couple of baskets from Midtown as now James Ash comes away with it. And goes down and draws some contact. He'll go to the line for two shots. Forty seconds remaining. 45-27 in a game that's really been all Oresco from start to finish. A little bit more depth, a little bit more experience, obviously. Like, like we talked about earlier, Midtown needed to get out to a great start. And unfortunately, they